Probably the most, uh, two most advanced next generation ALK inhibitors are LDK378 from Novartis and Electinib or AF802 from Chugai Roche. Um, both drugs have FDA breakthrough therapy designation status now, and um, uh, we can talk about each one individually. Um, LDK378 uh, has probably the most data behind it at this point. Um, it's gone through phase one, through phase two testings, currently in phase three trials. Um, the data from the phase one study um, showed a response rate of about 60% in patients uh, who were ALK positive and had relapse of crizotinib, and a median progression-free survival of about 8.3 months. Um, so very, um, I would say, impressive activity because that's a group of patients who have relapsed on the first generation crizotinib, and by and large, most of those patients had all, also already received chemotherapy. So this is a TKI and chemo refractory population now seeing response rates of 60% and a very uh, long progression-free survival. Um, <clears throat> so the, that phase one trial has given way to phase two trials that are, actually one of them is even complete now, we're waiting for results on that, and an ongoing phase three trials. Novartis has publicly stated that they expect to file um, for accelerated approval by early 2014, so the hope is that we may have another ALK inhibitor that's commercially available sometime in the middle of 2014. Electinib is the second um, ALK inhibitor that's fairly advanced. Um, electinib has already been studied quite extensively in Japan, where it's been primarily studied in the crizotinib naive population and has very, very impressive um, efficacy in that population with a response rate reported to be 93% and very long durations of response. Um, <clears throat> Electinib is now also being tested in the crizotinib resistant setting, and um, so far the data is still early, but also seeing very good response rates in the 50 to 60 percent range. We don't yet know how long these responses are lasting. With both drugs, LDK378 and electinib, um, we're seeing very good activity in brain metastases and also in leptomeningeal disease. So those are two sites, very difficult sites for us. Um, for these patients because they tend to be um, hard to treat with the standard therapies and we often run out of options for those patients. And so these new drugs are showing really good activity in that setting.